Paint Company, and today I want to tell you about a product called Le Chaux. Le Chaux is a French lime paint, and it's really going to help you take your paint projects to the next level. We are going to transform an ordinary piece of wood into something truly amazing. All right, now I'm going to distress my piece of wood. This is actually distressing to the extreme. I want it to look really beat up. My friend Kim McMillan taught me this technique and it involves a Dremel tool, which I was really scared of until she showed me how fun it is. I actually forgot my safety goggles today, but you always want to make sure that you're wearing safety goggles when you're playing with this. Um, I called my husband and he brought me over a pair and they are yellow. <laughs> Not my favorite, but here we go. I'm gonna put on my safety glasses and I'm gonna start my Dremel tool. It's got like this little sanding thing on it. I'm gonna set it to medium and I'm gonna hit my ends with it. Okay, now I'm going to actually use this Dremel tool to score the wood here in the center to make it look like it's cracked. I'm going to use the edge of it this time. Now I'm just going to dust it off and see what we've got. Pretty cool. All right, now we're ready to base coat it. Lime paint has a very high pH. That means that before you can apply it to a surface, you have to put a mineral primer or an acid blocking primer. Maison Blanche Vintage Furniture Paint has a high amount of um, chalk in it, so you can use this as your barrier, but you must do this first. You can choose any color that you want to. I'm going to use coffee bean. This color is really pretty. It's kind of like an espresso bean color. I'm going to use my chip brush and can't forget my painter's points. When you paint it, it doesn't have to be pristine because we've got a lot of stuff that's coming on top. So I'm just using a plain old chip brush. I'm just applying it to the surface, scrubbing it into all the nooks and crannies that we just created. All right, you're going to let this dry now. You can put an additional coat if you want to, but it's just a barrier layer, so the most important thing is just to make sure everything is covered. All right, my coffee bean is dry, and now I'm ready to apply my French lime paint. We're using a color called parchment. You're going to want to shake it up really well before you use it, or stir it up really well. This feels kind of like a really thick paint. I'm going to take a chip brush, and I'm going to apply it to the entire surface kind of haphazardly. Now lime paints and plasters have been used for over 7,000 years. It's what's on the inside of the pyramids. Um, it's a really cool product because it's got some antibacterial properties. It's great for children's rooms, for people with allergies. 
It's also humidity resistant, so it's great for bathrooms. Mold and mildew resistant. It's a bactericide and it resists pests, so it's pretty cool. Can't forget my edges. Now you'll notice that it's a little bit bubbly. It's got some tiny bubbles in it, and that's from me shaking it up, but that's not a problem. Those go away. You'll notice that some areas of this piece have more paint and some have less paint, and that's really what you want. You want some areas that are thinner and some areas that are thicker, and you'll see why soon. So I'm just going to add on some in a couple of locations. I'm really just slopping it on. All right, now set your timer for 20 minutes. You're going to walk away and leave it alone for 20 minutes. All right, my 20 minute timer has gone off and now it really gets fun. You'll notice that some areas are lighter and some areas are darker. The darker areas are still wet and the lighter areas are dried up. Um, this paint dries a lot lighter when it's dry than when it's wet. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic, this is actually a hotel room card, and I'm going to use it to manipulate the wet areas to the dry areas. The neat thing about this lime paint is that it starts to kind of turn into a putty as it dries. It's really, really a unique animal. So I'm going to start with one side and I'm just going to move the wet over the dry. It feels like a clay almost. And I'm going to do the sides too that same way. And my little card is getting wet and what's happening is that I'm bringing over some of the wet to the dry areas. Don't be scared of this, you cannot mess it up. All right, now that's done. Step two is that I'm going to take a trash can liner. And I get these at Sam's or Costco. They're the really thin ones. Grocery bags won't work. I'm not sure why, but they just won't. I'm going to open it up and crinkle it up, and I'm going to use it to sort of buff my finish very lightly. And this is going to continue to take the wet and move it over to the dry areas. And it's going to look like we've got crusted paint layer upon layer. I'm also going to use the trash bag to press and imprint into my wet areas. Now I'm going to set my timer one more time, this time 30 minutes. All right, it's been 30 minutes and I'm going to do the same process I did before. I'm going to use the card this time to scrape off any loose bits. Okay, now the bag. This time I'm using a little bit more pressure. You'll notice that I'm starting to get some color change. It's really cool that one color of paint actually gives you about four or five different tones. It's sort of like if you have an old leather handbag, it's kind of developed a patina over time on the handles or an old leather journal. This is what this kind of mimics. It's a patina that we're creating. All right, you can see that our surface is slightly shiny now and we've got 
nice layers of color. It looks like we've got three or four coats of paint on it. It looks just beautiful. Now we're going to add a stencil. The paint is still wet somewhat, but that's okay. It's almost dry to the touch. It's slightly wet in some areas. Have you guys ever heard of a fresco painting? Back in the day, people would go and paint on top of lime plaster. Before they'd begin painting, someone would lay a fresh coat of lime, and then the artist would have to paint on top of that lime while it was still wet. That way, the pigment became part of the lime plaster. So that's kind of what we're going to do right now. It's still a little bit damp. I've got this cute little stencil. I've used it over and over again. You can tell. I got it from Hobby Lobby, I think. And I'm just going to spray a little bit of stencil adhesive. And let this tack up for a moment. I'm actually going to use um, Annie's Reserve Glazing Cream to put the stencil on. I'm going to use two different colors. I'm going to use the coal tar and I'm also going to use the tobacco. So that way we're going to get two different shades of brown on there. I'm going to grab a paper towel and a stencil brush. And I'm going to place my stencil where I want it. Just kind of eyeballing it. Okay. Now I'm ready to stencil on my design. I want to get my brush completely coated, but if I were to just go right onto my surface with all of this paint, it would be too much. So that's where the paper towel comes in. I want my bristles coated, but I don't want them to be gunked up with paint. So I'm wiping some off. Then I'm going to start in just a slow motion and dab on in random areas this coal tar. All right, let's see what we've got. It looks pretty cool. We're going to distress this later, but the pigment is actually going to bind to the lime paint and become sort of part of the plaster. This product is interesting in that over time it actually reacts with molecules of air and turns back into a layer of stone. So you'll notice that over time your piece that you've painted will feel nice and cool, almost like you're touching stone. Alright, it's all dry and now it's time to sand and distress. I've got a medium grit sanding block and I'm going to start to distress. I really want to showcase those edges and show some of that coffee bean underneath. Focus on your edges in places that would naturally get wear and tear. I'm also going to use the flat part of the sponge in a circular manner and I'm distressing my stencil. So if there's any goof ups where you don't like the stencil, just sand it right off. Okay, now I'm just going to dust it off. And we're ready to wax. I'm going to use antique wax and I'm going to use dark brown. 
I'm just using my wax chip brush. And I'm going to spread this dark brown wax over my entire surface. You really scrub it in there so that you can get into all of your nooks and crannies. Alright, now that I've got the wax everywhere, I'm going to take a soft cloth and I'm going to buff. Look at those areas where the wax has just gotten into those nooks and crannies and crevices. It looks so pretty. It's got such a nice patina. Look at that. It just looks so rich and that satin finish is just amazing. All right, that's it. Now I want to share a project that I did using lime paint. Okay, here's what I started with. The homeowner found an authentic antique French fireplace and then she had it replicated by a local carpenter. It was much less expensive than purchasing the authentic. So I posted up pictures of the inspirational French fireplace and I got to work. I decided to use a little lime paint because that's what was probably originally used on the authentic antique fireplace. I was really pleased with the way my fake turned out. The lime paint really lent to a feeling of believable authenticity. I think we nailed it. What do you think? I hope that you love Le Show French Lime Paint as much as I do. Please check out our other videos and let us know what you think. Also, we'd love it if you would share your own photos using Le Show on our Facebook page. We'd love to see your work. I'm Annie Omar and I'll see you next time.